Welcome to this week's Behind the Headlines. We are talking about this week's cover story, which was written by a former weekly intern and gun grad, Shauna Chen. And she's back at college, so she unfortunately could not be here today. So I'm filling in for her. Um, and we have some gun, current gun students and then a recent graduate um, to talk about this story today. And they were all interviewed for, for Shauna's piece. And we have Chloe Sorensen, who graduated from gun in June. Um, thank you for being here. And Danny Hall, who's a senior at Gunn, and Meghna Singh, who's a junior. Um, so what I wanted, one thing I wanted to start with was I think that everyone in this community in particular can agree that mental health and self-care is really important. Um, but it's really hard when the rubber hits the road to sort of um, practice what you preach. And that was something you talked about in the story. Could you talk about that dynamic of you know being a mental health advocate but having trouble sort of re reinforcing that in your own life? Yeah, I mean, I think for the longest time, I really knew that mental health was important, and I was doing all of this work in the field of mental health, so I obviously was aware of what was best for me and what was what good self-care looked like, but I don't think I ever really realized I needed to put that into practice until it became too much to handle. Mm -hmm. um, and I think around junior year is when things started getting really tough, and I kind of just reassessed my life, how I was living it, and I realized that I really needed to practice what I preach. And so I started going to therapy, I started figuring out um, how to manage my time better, how to manage things, how to say no to things, how to not mm -hmm. take on everything at once. And I think that really made a huge difference and it's something that stuck with me uh, today. But I do think it's really hard to get to that point um, just by listening to people telling you that you need to slow down. Yeah. I think it's like everybody has their own journey to get there and they have to figure out what wellness means to them. Yeah, and it sounds like even though um, you know when people say to you, you know, grades don't matter and you are not your grades or you are not your GPA when it comes to yourself and you're still comparing yourself to other you know, students in your classes, it's really hard to sort of, um, like you said, practice what you preach. Yeah. Um, and I'm curious, since you're a senior this year, Danny, how you, oh, yeah. what you think about the, the evolution of the way mental health is talked about at Gunn over your four years? So I don't, I don't know if this is solely something that's changed over the course of the four years, and I think it has, um, but I think it's also part of getting older. Um, when Project Safety Net did their survey, um, they found that younger children, uh, ages 13 to 15, thought mental health or mental um, illness was much more shameful. Um, and although the survey wasn't really or I doubt it was really statistically sound because it was entirely opt-in, um, and I haven't taken statistics, so I can't really verify that, but um, that would be my assumption. Um, that as people have gotten older, uh, they learn to accept that m your mental health is just as important. And so I think that's something that has become more true over the course of the four years that I've been there um, at Gun, and that people have in general, um, on the whole, learned that mental health is just as important as your physical health. Is there anything, any changes or initiatives that have been put in place at Gun that have been particularly helpful in sort of advancing that message or just also increasing student wellness? I think the, I do think the, the wellness center has actually made a very large impact. Mm -hmm. uh, people are in there all the time um, and they, are less afraid to go and seek help or go seek help for their friends, um, which is something that I think has made a really big difference. I think the great thing about the Wellness Center is that all of the resources are kind of centralized in one place. And so you could be going there to get a Band-Aid or you could be going there to see a therapist. And I think that's made a big difference in how people perceive the Wellness Center. Mm -hmm. um, and so you could be walking in there for any reason. And so people are less likely to judge you. There's less stigma surrounding mm -hmm. um, the building. And now that they're, so they're building a central building with the Wellness Center in it at right. Gunn. Um, it's going to be such a huge part of the campus and such a central part of the campus that I think um, the people, the number of people using it will actually increase over the next few years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you all personally gone in there? Yeah. Okay. yeah. And used it a lot? <laughs> I think yeah. people, now that people know that they can go into the wellness center to get a snack, get hot water for their tea or 
cup of noodles or sit in color or like Chloe said, go talk to a counselor. I think that's made a huge difference because people know that this is a center that they can go to for their wellness needs. It exists. It's like a physical room that you go to. Um, And then like Chloe said, in this new building that's going to be built on the bottom floor will be the activity center for students with like fun games and food and ping pong tables and stuff like that. And then above on the top floor will be the nurse and the wellness center. So once you walk into that one building, people aren't going to know, like, are you going to hang out with your friends, sit on the couch? Mm -hmm. Are you going to go buy a yearbook or are you going upstairs to go talk to a counselor or color de-stress or are you going to get a band-aid like everything is in one place and so students just go to where like their whole body and mind needs yeah and it's also really helpful for just normalizing especially for incoming freshmen every year they'll come in and it will just yeah. be a part of the campus mm-hmm. for them it's sort of a, just really a normal excited thing for that <laughs> yeah on the flip side of that um I forget which student Shauna quoted, but someone was saying that there are many well-intentioned efforts in the district and at Gunn mm-hmm. to address student well-being, um, and some of them sort of fall flat. Are there things that, that changes that have been made um, or efforts that were well-intentioned but um, didn't feel effective at, at, as students on the ground sort of living this every day? I think um, the YES program got a lot of negative feedback from students. So youth empowerment seminar where in every PE class you would have like one of your units would be YES and then the that was your freshman year and then your sophomore year you would have um, YES reminders once a month. And it's and mindfulness and mindfulness, yoga. Mindfulness, yoga right. and breathing. Okay. And so those were the things that we're focused on. And I think that students aren't realizing how powerful these tools really are until much later. Mm -hmm. So what happens now is that after they've gone through these trainings, some teachers, which I think is really great, has started, they've started um, implementing this into their classes. So before you take a test or a quiz or before you write an in-class essay, they say, just take a few minutes, do whatever you need to do, whether it's these certain type of breaths that help like give you energy or calm your mind. Um, So some teachers are adding that, which is great, but most students would rather like play football or play volleyball Mm -hmm. than sit and listen to someone talk about mindfulness and breathing. Um, So I think that's something that certain students feel like has fallen flat. But I think as the years come, like Danny said, once they mature and they realize that this is another tool they can use in their toolkit Mm -hmm. um, for well-being and mental health, that it'll actually be beneficial to them. And it doesn't work for everyone, but I do think that it's something that can benefit a lot of people. And before this started, you were talking about there had been some pushback to the new social emotional learning program among freshmen, not really about the content, but more about just the schedule. Is that something else? They they don't like the fact that in their schedule, time is being taken away to focus on um, mental health. I don't think it's that they have anything in the curriculum that's really bothering them. But again, we'll be following up with them and seeing their feedback because it's the first year that it's being implemented. Um, and every year after that, the, the incoming freshman class will be getting this, this, um, this training in social emotional learning. Um, but they just don't like how it's taking time out of their schedule and they could be like seeing friends or seeing a teacher. Mm -hmm. But this year we changed the bell schedule again Mm -hmm. so that we would have two flex times. So at least they have once a week Mm -hmm. that they can go and and speak to teachers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think with any new program, there's always some pushback Mm -hmm. because especially since they're implementing it in phases, so not every student at the high school has to go through it. A lot of kids will push back and say, hey, the juniors and seniors aren't doing this. How come we have to do it? And I think that's happened like every time Gunn has implemented a new program. Like with Mm -hmm. Titan 101 at first, everybody was very resistant to it. And now it's just become kind of a part of your everyday culture as a freshman. Um, So I I hope that that will happen with the self program, too. I think what's exciting about that is it's supposed to be in elementary schools as well. Yeah, um, and so as people, yeah. mm-hmm. um, as people grow up with it and it's part of what they're doing in school throughout their entire lives from the time they're like five mm-hmm. um, until they reach high school, they expect it. And so yeah. to have that already normalized um, as they're growing up and figuring out what school is supposed to be like, um, I think there'll be a lot less pushback and then people will really appreciate it yeah. at yeah. that point. Yeah, absolutely. You all shared in the story about sort of different pressures that you, yeah, you have felt at Gunn and just in the general community, whether it's about, you know, asking for help or admitting that you, you need help, um, or academic pressure, um, the sort of having to put on that facade of everything is great above the surface level. Um, where do you think those pressures come from, or at least for, for you personally, each of you, where do they come from? I think for myself, it was always coming from myself. It was like I was putting this pressure on myself to do well. And I wasn't necessarily uh, competing with my peers at all. Like, I actually feel like I really disengaged from kind of 
the competitive aspects of gun that other students have talked about. Um, and I really didn't want to compare my scores to other people or talk about what classes I was taking. And I just wanted to do what was best for me. But at the same time, I really wanted to do the best in everything that I did. And I think that was kind of an expectation that I had for myself that wasn't always sustainable. And so I had to kind of reassess that and take a look and take a step back um, and kind of reconfigure my priorities. Yeah. What about you guys? I would say myself as well. Mm -hmm. um, just because um, it's a lot easier to have the expectations for yourself. Like people won't, people wouldn't necessarily tell me what classes I should take or that I should be taking a harder class or that I should be doing better. Um, but if things did end up starting to slip, it was more of an expectation that I held myself to. Um, yeah. That I thought, oh, I should be able to do this. Um, why, why not? Like, why am I not able to? Um, and so it was more something that I came to expect for myself than really anyone told me I should be doing. Yeah, and that's, that's the same with me. I think I, ever since I was little, my parents can attest to this, I've like held myself to a really high standard of wanting, I, I mean, for years it was wanting perfection, but then it was making sure that I put in all the effort, but also seeing the results in terms of grades. Um, and I think that as much as I tried not to compare myself to others and compare classes or GPA or extracurriculars or volunteering, since everyone else is talking about it and it's so common yeah. in the academic environment, it was hard. It is still hard not to engage in that conversation or even if I don't say anything and I end up leaving that conversation, which I do all the time, just because I don't want to talk about it. I think that it's hard. Um, it's hard not to think about that afterwards. Yeah. It's, you have that information now in your mind. And so it's once it's there, it's there. You can't just like forget about it in an instant. And so I think that just knowing what, what other people are doing, how well they're doing, it's just hard to hear sometimes that, and it may not even be true information. They yeah. could just be saying that they're doing fine and you just take it for what it is. But I think that just because it's being said, it's talked about all the time, the gun, gun culture really does like amongst the students, it's talked about. And so it's hard not to get roped into that and yeah. separate yourself from it. Chloe, I know you've only been at college for a month, but just having <laughs> a, about, or less than two, not even a month, <laughs> um, having a little bit of perspective, um, how do you feel, or like have you reflected on just the gun culture and the whole, that whole climate? And I know that those things don't go away by any means in mm -hmm. college and they can be you know, just as intense, if not more so, but have you reflected on that at all? Yeah, I mean, I think going into college has been really interesting to be in a new academic setting and being surrounded by new people. Um, and at Stanford especially, it's a lot of the same culture. I mean, it's still in Palo Alto, obviously. You have the same surroundings. Um, and a lot of the students still are very, very high-performing and good at everything. Um, like the girl next to me in psych the other day was like Katie Ledecky. She won like five gold medals oh at the oh Olympics. And I was like, what? <laughs> um, but... I think it's forced me to think about where I came from and I thought about how gun shaped me. And I think that the challenges I faced at gun were very difficult, but they're also very formative. And I feel like they kind of, they made me mature a little bit more um, than I had expected to in high school. And I think they really pushed me to think about myself and not, I don't mean like I just grew up in the sense like, I graduated, I learned a lot, like I did all the normal high school things, but I really think I discovered who I was in high school. And I think I really learned what's important to me, what I wanna do in the future. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's made college a lot more meaningful for me just these first two weeks is because I was able to take classes that are interesting to me and that I know that I'm interested in pursuing. And I think that's made a really big difference in just like my everyday life. Yeah. Um, Magna, I was really struck in the article by a comment you made about um, when your friends ask you to hang out now and if you have a therapy appointment, you just tell them I have therapy and I can't go. Um, and I remember actually I went to therapy in high school and I didn't feel comfortable saying that to some people. And I was wondering if that was something you were able to be honest about up front or if that sort of was like something you came to mm -hmm. later it was, on. Yeah, it was definitely a gradual thing. I think at first, I don't think I told any of my friends that I was going through a really tough time. Some of them noticed, but it wasn't at all like my, my parents and I sat down and had the discussion that like it's time I get actual help. And I've been doing so much work for other people and trying to help the community and help students and take care of them. Like 
and it was in turn hurting myself just because like it was it would be so much on my mind and so much on my plate that I had to think about and deal with every day and I know that Chloe has felt the same way um, and then I was burnt out and so after that just like what Chloe did I ended up looking at all of my activities and I made a list of all my responsibilities and I sat down and my family said like which ones don't you want to do anymore and that was swimming for for the school it was not the right fit for me and so I dropped that mm. after two weeks of being on the team um and I went back to PE class and so then I had eight classes again but it was just I don't need that pressure and I dropped a volunteering thing and all these things and I also decided to add in therapy once a week on Fridays mm. and for a while I didn't tell people what I was doing most people didn't notice or like it wasn't like what are you doing from this time to this time sure. it wasn't that specific question but as things started to get better when I was going to therapy more regularly um they could see like an improvement in myself and I then I felt super comfortable when I would be, talk to them and I was able to say like this is what I'm doing sorry I can't hang out with you but I need to take care of myself right now and it was a good few months where I didn't really want to hang out with people I just need to work on myself yeah. because by doing that then I would hear about their problems and their issues and would always need to check up on them and things like that just like that's how all three of us are it's just we want to make sure everyone else is doing okay but it came the time where I needed to make sure I was doing it for myself yeah and so after that, like even now I'm talking about it, that I go to therapy, I went to therapy, and I think it really helped me for that time that I needed it. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so now I'm super comfortable about talking about it, and I recommend the place that I went to people <laughs> all the time just because, you know what, there's so many different ways that you can help yourself, whether it's like coloring, drawing, playing a sport, like going on a walk, listening to music, or going to therapy, and if you know and you try a bunch of things, you'll find one that works for you. Yeah. So this is just one that helped me at the time, and I think a lot of people can benefit that, like, a normal high school, a normal high schooler who they see me all the time, like, I do it, and it's helped me, and so possibly it could help them. Yeah, yeah. That's great. and I think that's actually really important as mental health advocates. Like, coming into college these past two, three weeks, I've really thought about that a lot because I do still see my therapist regularly. Um, and sometimes people will ask you, like, oh, why are you going off campus and going to Mountain View every Monday? Um, and at first I was kind of unsure because you never know what people's perceptions are and how they think about mental health. Um, but then I kind of realized, like, that's such an important part of fighting stigma is being able to normalize that and make that just an everyday thing. And being able to say, oh, I'm going to therapy without any fear or any shame is, I think, a really powerful way yeah. um, to fight that. And so I think... It can be difficult, it can be scary or challenging at some times, but I think it's really important. Yeah, and I think by and large you get positive reactions when you do yeah. say it like that. That fear is really in our yeah. own heads about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let's see. I wanted to ask you about your research project, of course. This was a really interesting <laughs> look you. into what Gunn and Pally alumni have done post high school and sort of their perceptions about what was important to them. Um, can you talk about why you started that project and wanted to look into it? Yeah, so I found out about the Advanced Authentic Research class um, the end of my freshman year, and I knew you had to apply to be in that class, first of all, so if I got into the class, I knew that I wanted to do a project that in the end would help the students at school. Like, that's the only thing that I wanted to do, and if it could revolve around mental health, that'd be awesome. Um, and so what ended up happening is, like, I came up with a list of ideas and and topics that I could turn uh, create a research project about. And the one that I felt would be the most helpful is to find out what are alumni doing after they leave high school because I can then I, I could like backtrack from there to their own high school experience to see if it was different or the same. And I asked about their mental health issues to see if it got better, got worse. Um, and overall, like once they reflect, once they leave high school and they reflect about their experience, what could they learn from it? And I can take that advice and give it to the students. So that was the overall goal. And specifically, I wanted to see if all the work that students are putting in to have to take these honors classes, APs, doing crazy numbers of volunteer work every week, extracurricular activities to build up that college resume, is it worth it in the end? Because like we talked about, this competition between students is crazy. and it comes from a place where you're doing all this work right now so that you can get into this college so that you can be successful quote unquote in life whatever that may mean whether it's coming back to palo alto or living in another country or making six figures like danny said um in the article it just 
does that does that matter? And in the end, I found out that it doesn't. From PAUSD graduates, they were from Gunn or Pali, no other outside school, so it's mm-hmm. data from our own town. Um, and Coverly was not, um, no students were attending Coverly at the time. I know that high school was there, but it was only Gunn and Pali, and I think that that has really valuable data because now there are numbers behind the idea that you don't need to go to these specific few colleges in the country. These top-ranked colleges, the ones that we hear about, like the Ivies, the UCs, and Stanford, which are the main colleges that people talk about, they're not the be-all and Mm -hmm. end-all in life. You can go to you can go to college, not go to college, take a gap year or not, but there are so many opportunities and ways that you can get to what you want to do in life. Yeah. So that's what I was able to get, and now I have the data to support that. Yeah. Well, I hope that you do get to talk about that with other students or just make sure that people yeah. hear that widely. I know. I really yeah. hope so. I presented it to staff um, oh, that's great. in May of last year, and some teachers actually took it upon themselves to share it with their own classes. Wow. So random students came up to me and were like, I saw your presentation. Like, thank you, I want my parents to know this, or this really helped alleviate the stress, stress in my mind that mm. I need to be constantly like pushing myself to the max every day so I can get this GPA or get this SAT score, things like that. Yeah. Um, and hopefully in the works that I can be presenting this to more students. Mm-hmm. I presented at Project Safety Nets meeting a few weeks ago, nice. and some of the people in the room actually took my survey, so that was amazing. That's I had great. no idea, but I was, was able to meet them. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Is there anything we haven't brought up or anything you want to really highlight about anything that's been going on again this year? Or? <laughs> I don't know. I think self is a big thing, the social emotional mm-hmm. learning um, program. And I think as we learn and get feedback about what um, the freshman class thinks of it and next year to change the curriculum if it needs to be changed, every year I think it's going to get easier since more the majority of the school will have will have this uh, implemented into yeah. their schedule. I think that's going to make it a lot easier. And hopefully by the last date that I heard was February of 2019, the construction will be completed. So that's the year that I graduate. And, and the new the central new building. Central yeah. glass building with nice <laughs> grass around it will be established with the Student Activity Center, Wellness Center, yeah. and the nurse. So yeah. hopefully that's like going to be completed on time so that the the next class coming in can see it and begin to utilize it and normalize mental health. I think that just one piece that I think has really struck me as I've reflected on my time at Gunn is just the number of students who have begun to advocate for themselves Mm -hmm. and who have begun to advocate for mental health. And I think when I was a freshman, it wasn't talked about. It wasn't really an issue on campus um, that people focused on. But now, like if you look at just like gun this year. There's building a wellness center. They are um, doing this social emotional learning. There's the wellness committee. There's Rock. Um, There's all these different student organizations who are driving change. And I think that's really incredible to look back on um, and see how much gun really transformed in the four years I was there. Um, And it's really inspiring because you keep seeing these young people um, pushing for change. And then each year, a new group of young people comes in and yeah. they each have their own set of passion, their set of um, issues that they care about and they really push for change. And I think as long as that's a constant, um, gun will be headed in a good direction. Yeah, well, I was going to ask what you think can be done to sort of sustain, sustain a focus on mental health, you know, outside of times of, of crisis. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's kind of the answer is students who will pick up the torch. I think student-run initiatives are the best and the most impactful because if it's all adults talking all the time, it's a principal talking out at you um, or an assistant principal or an outside person who none of us have a connection to, students are not going to be likely to listen. But if it's if in every self-class you have a Titan ambassador who's mm-hmm. another student telling you their own experiences, personal stories, um, advocating for something, whether it be mental health or something else, I think people are more likely to listen or attend events. Like this past month in September, it was Suicide Prevention Month, and I took on the whole month as a wellness commissioner, and we had a month-long um, calendar full of events. Every few days there was something relating to mental health, and I think that that, because it was all student-run, student-thought of, student-organized, that really, like, students were really interested in what was happening. Like, what is that club doing? Because since mm. everything is student-run um, currently. Yeah. So I think that that's a really big thing that I hope continues, just like Chloe said, with the new grade, with this new freshman group, we're looking to find people, whether it be mental health or not, like what are mm-hmm. they passionate about and what do they want to bring to gun? Yeah. 
Well, thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. And I know Shauna appreciates you guys for participating in the story. Um, that's all for this week. Um, if you want to watch more episodes behind the headlines, you can click subscribe below or you can head to palatonline.com or our social media pages um, to read more about this story. Thanks so much.